Good morning. Hope everyone's doing well this morning on this rainy Sunday, and it's a, still a wonderful uh, morning to worship the Lord. Amen? Uh, a couple announcements. Our ice skating trip for our children, youth, and families uh, for this afternoon has been postponed because of the weather, and so we uh, will most likely make that up on this Wednesday night, uh, but I'll send out more details in the Remind app at our church, or you can contact the church office uh, tomorrow to find out more details about that. Uh, confirmation is coming up in just a couple weeks on the 23rd, and so we have a, a couple signed up for confirmation, but if you'd like more information about uh, confirmation or about joining the church, please contact me or Pastor Randall, and we can get you all set up for that. And then uh, lastly, the church would like to, the staff would like to just thank you again for your gifts to us during Christmas time, and it was a wonderful blessing to us and our families, and we just wanted to say a huge thank you for your gifts to us and just for your, you always taking care of us uh, during the Christmas season especially. Uh, there's a couple of other announcements in the bulletin, but those are all that I'll bring your attention to. Uh, if you'll stand up at this time and welcome one another to worship. Good morning, church. We are glad to be with you on this second Sunday in the year, the first Sunday in Epiphany. If you are looking for a place to plant, to grow, we invite you to take a look at Lafayette First United Methodist Church. We are located here in Lafayette at 301 South Main Street. We have three services to choose from. Uh, Nine o'clock is downstairs. It's more of a contemporary service. Nine, uh, 10 o'clock is Sunday school, and then 11 o'clock is up here, a uh, more traditional service. If we are worshiping with you in person, or if we are worshiping with you online, or if you are listening to us on WQCH AM FM, we are glad to be with you today. Hear these words to the call to worship. The voice of God resounds upon the water. The Spirit of the Lord hovers over the stream. The Son of God is named Beloved, and all who worship shout out glory, ascribe to the Lord's majesty and strength. Let us worship God in holy splendor. Our first hymn is found on page 422, Jesus, Thine All-Victorious Love. Would you please stand as we sing together?
baptismal creed is our apostles' creed. This is what we believe as United Methodist Christians. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. remain standing, turning to page 465, singing all, for, all four verses of Holy Spirit, Truth Divine. You may be seated, and at this time, any children would like to come down for our children's time can come on down. Good morning. All right, I have a game for us to play this morning. Are you all excited? All right, and the game is going to be to guess something that I'm describing. In congregation, you can play along as well. And so I'm going to be describing something, and I want y'all to see if y'all can guess what it is. All right? And so I'm going to give y'all clues. Your first clue is the place I'm describing is awesome. Yeah. So what place do you think it could be? I don't know what the, the game is. Guess what I'm describing. It's not the jump park. That's a very good guess, though. Any other place? Or do y'all need another clue? All right, the next, the next clue is that this place is sweet. Any guesses? Not a place of candy, no. You want another clue? All right, the next clue is that this place is new. It is not the Great American Cookie Store. That's a very good guess, though. Your mom's giving you another clue that this place is new to Lafette. All right, and another clue, this place has been very busy. Not Wendy's, but that's a very good guess, too. Congregation, y'all want to help him out? Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen. And uh, so it's Dairy Queen, the, the new, the grill and chill. Yeah, have y'all been to Dairy Queen yet? Y'all did? Okay. 
And so uh, I was trying to build up Dairy Queen. I was trying to make y'all hyped up or excited about, about Dairy Queen. No, we're not getting another one, no. Uh, that, was, that was the only thing. But I was trying to prepare the way for Dairy Queen to make y'all excited. And in today's scripture, there's a special guy named John the Baptist who was preparing the way, or he was kind of like the hype man for Jesus. He was telling the people about how Jesus was going to be so much greater than he was and how Jesus was the Messiah. And so in today's scripture, we hear about John the Baptist talking about Jesus and preparing the way for him. And Jesus is baptized in the scripture today as well. And so we hear God speak about how wonderful Jesus is and how he is his son. And so I wanted y'all to think about how y'all can be kind of hype people for Jesus, how y'all can also prepare the way for Jesus, just like John the Baptist did. And how can we do that? We can go to our schools and talk to our friends about Jesus. We can, you know, wear different T-shirts or other things like that, listen to Christian music. But the most important way that we can kind of prepare the way for the Lord is we can show others the love of Jesus in our everyday lives, and we can be kind to them and care for them. And so that's my challenge to you all this week is to show them kindness and caring in, uh, in uh, preparing the way for the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much that we, uh, Lord, if we can get excited about a Dairy Queen coming to town, Lord, we can get excited about worshiping you and uh, excited about what you do in our lives, Lord. So help us to uh, focus on you this morning, Lord. I pray that you'd be with Pastor Randall as he brings your message. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now y'all can get hyped up on some candy. The good news today is that God loves us and calls each of us by name. Knowing we are eternally forgiven and infinitely loved, let us boldly confess our sins before God. Almighty God, we are precious in your sight, yet we often forget that you are our beloved and that we are your beloved as well. We confess that our love is oftentimes fickle and inconsistent. We follow selfish goals and oftentimes deny that our way of life harms others and hurts your world. We confess, O Lord, and want to change, creating us a clean heart, strengthen iron, resolve us, reconcile us to one another, and bless us with your peace. May we remember, O Lord, that as your beloved, you forgive us of our sins and cast our sins as far as east is from the west. You pardon us and put us at peace to love with you and with neighbor in order that we might be able to serve the world. Almighty God, as Jesus prayed at his baptism, as, as it hovered over him as a mothering spirit brooded over him, providing sustenance and strength, we now come before you asking you to be with us, stay with us, pray with us as we pray for one another. We pray for your world. O oh, nurturing spirit, sustain us with your power. May your work spark our lives with truth and joy as we serve one another to the glory of your holy name. Nurturing spirit, stir within us your power. We pray for all leaders and people around the globe. May your justice provoke us to shape a peaceful world where all work for the common good. O oh, Holy Spirit, stir within us your holy power. We pray for the well-being of your creation. May your goodness startle us to the horror of our exploitation and abuse. Holy Spirit, stir us with your holy power. We pray for all who suffer grief or sickness of any kind. May your tender presence abide with us and hasten our healing. Stir us with your power, O Lord, we pray for all who lack these essentials of life. May your righteousness raise us up to walk together with respect and dignity for all. Stir within us your power, O Lord. You have made us, you have formed us, and you have called us by name. You have redeemed us in and through your son, Jesus Christ. Receive our prayers this day. Hear us as we pray those names audibly and privately as we pray to you this day.
We pray this for your giving spiritual life that saves us and teach us how to pray as you taught your disciples to pray and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If the ushers will come at this time, we will continue in our worship service by worshiping God with our tithes and our offerings. Almighty God, as you proclaimed who your son is, may we here today, you proclaim who we are. We are your children in whom you are well pleased. Receive everything that we offer you, O Lord, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we ask. Amen. be seated.
keep quiet. Well, can I get an amen? amen? Thank you, choir. Powerful singing, powerful singing. Hear this word of prayer. Glorious God, when Jesus was baptized for your healing mission, the heavens opened in a flash of glory as vision and voice blazed upon the waters. May your spirit so burn in us that we hear your word today. Translate it into deed and follow Jesus in paths of justice, right relationship and peace. We pay in the name of Christ. Amen. Scripture reading Luke, third chapter, verses 15 through 17 and verses 21 through 22. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts, Concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them, saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit in fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. Verse 23. Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice from heaven came and said, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Here ends the reading. These are the words of God. For the people of God, thanks be to God. We have been here, we have to go back to the third Sunday in Advent to remember being here before because we were at the Jordan not too many Sundays ago hearing John the Baptist proclaim the way, prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. We recall that there were all kinds of people on the shores asking what must we do, what must we do. And John was communicating with them how they were to live out their job, how they were to live out their life in order to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord, to be there to, to live as they would as Christ was among them. This is Luke's version. And of course, Luke communicates with us, as John did, that John the Baptist is not the Messiah. He is the one who is coming to introduce us to the Messiah, that is to Jesus so he comes and introduces us to the Messiah and he says that he himself only baptizes with water, that there is someone coming more mightier than him, that he's not even worthy to untie his sandals, but that he will baptize not only with the Holy Spirit, but he will also baptize with fire and that his winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor, to gather the wheat in his granary, but the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. What that means is that we are both shaft and wheat. There are things that's in our lives that we need to be cleared of. It needs to be burned off. There are things in our life that needs to be salvaged, and Jesus comes to do both. It says that when Jesus came into the water and Jesus was baptized, notice in Luke's gospel, when Jesus is baptized, he's baptized last. Notice that Luke doesn't tell us who baptized him, yet you and I are aware. The, the people are baptized first, then Jesus come and is baptized, and after he is baptized, notice what he does, he prays. When do you and I pray? Sometimes we are asked to pray. I was given a call not too long ago about a person who was undergoing surgery. And this person said that they asked their surgeon if he, the doctor was a he, if he would pray with them before surgery. And I love what this doctor said because it sort of lets me know maybe he's been through CPE. This doctor said, do you want me to pray with you? And the patient said, 
yes, and then the doctor said this. Do you want me to pray or do you want to pray? I thought that was perfect because the doctor did not assume that the patient wanted him to pray or did not assume that they were going to pray. He wanted to ask them, how would you have us to pray together? Do you want to pray or do you want me to pray? And of course the patient said, I want you to pray, which the doctor did. I wonder how many times we are asked to pray with someone and we ask them, well, who do you want to pray? Do you want to pray or do you want me to pray? Or do we assume that it's always us that they are asking to pray? I will never forget a time when Jesus saw a blind man and Jesus went up to the blind man and asked him this question, what would you have me to do for you? Now, doesn't that sound like a stupid question? Jesus goes up to a blind man and asks him, what do you want me to do? Well, increase my hearing. No. Help me to run faster. Well, no. Make my hair longer. Well, no. Help me to sing better. Well, no. To see? Oh. But you see, Jesus did not assume that this person wanted him to heal him of his blindness. He asks him, what do you want me to do for you? I wonder how many of us ask others what we would have them to do for them. One of the things that we are taught in pastoral care is not to assume that they want the pastor to do everything. I'll never forget when I was at Erlanger, I went into a patient's room and began to talk to them and I said to them, may I have a word of prayer with you? And they said yes and I prayed for them and I left. Well, the next day we had class and I wrote down the verbatim as to what I did and my supervisor actually had the gall to say to me, why did you pray with her? And I thought, You stupid person, what are you doing in this position asking me this stupid question? What do you mean? I'm a pastor, I'm a chaplain, I'm in the hospital, I'm supposed to pray with these people. And they said, no, how do you know that she wanted you to pray? How do you not know that maybe she wanted to pray for you? How did you know that? You didn't even ask her, you assumed. And then all of a sudden I learned what assume means. And all of a sudden I learned that, wait a minute, in my Christian faith I'm not to assume because you will recall that Mary and Joseph assumed that Jesus was with them and he wasn't. Sometimes we assume and we shouldn't assume. Sometimes we think we know what people want and we give them what they want before they ever ask. And we think that we've done a good thing which in actuality we may not have done a good thing. We may have pushed on them our agenda instead of ministering to them concerning their agenda. As Christians, we oftentimes are taught that we're to go out and we're to dominate and we're to tell people how to be instead of finding out where they are and how we can help them to become where they are supposed to be. We think we know what's best for people. Sometimes that may be right, but unless people are ready to receive it, They won't receive it. When Jesus comes to the water to be baptized, notice that while he is praying, there is a voice that affirms who he is. The Father is there, the Son is there, the Holy Spirit is there, and there is a voice that says to Jesus, you are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. How many sermons has Jesus preached before now? None. How many miracles has Jesus done before now? None. What has Jesus done to impress his father or to impress anyone that he is the man? None. Before Jesus ever gets started, before he ever proclaims his public ministry, God says about Jesus, you are my son, the beloved 
in whom I am well pleased. I wonder how many of us have heard that from our Lord concerning who we are. Probably not many of us because many of us have gone to church and we've heard how teetotally depraved we are and how we can't even save ourselves. We need God to save us or we can't be saved and then we wonder well, how in the world are we saved if we can't save ourselves. If we're not able to call upon the name of the Lord of God then we are totally dependent on him to save us. Well that may be one thing we've heard. But we have been given the ability to call upon the name of the Lord. We may be totally depraved, but not teetotally depraved. We can still call upon the Lord to save us. God has still enabled us with that ability, and we can choose to do that or not. And when we choose to do that, he saves us. He says to us, you are my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. I wonder how many of us has heard anyone say that about us. I go up and down Walmart aisles. I go up and down grocery store aisles and I hear people talking to their children and talking to one another like a dog. Calling them names, calling them things. I even heard a man once say, I wouldn't have in my mouth, I wouldn't have in my hand what you had in your mouth. I never heard that one before. And then we go to church and we hear about how God loves us and how God is with us and how God wants to see us through. And we think of all these names that people call us trying to keep us down, trying to control us, trying to make us be what they would have us to be instead of seeing what God would have us to be and to work with people to bring about the person God would have them to be. I don't know how God wants you to be. It's my calling to be with you and to help you bring that about. I'm not supposed to tell you how to be, yet I think many times we go to church and that's what we're taught. I think we're taught that you and I are supposed to know what everybody's supposed to be, so we're supposed to tell people how to be, and if they don't be that, then they are rebellious or they're disobedient. No, I think we're the ones who are disobedient. I think God would have us to be with people and to walk with people and to see where people want to be because if they're not ready to receive, they're not ready to believe. I talk to people day after day who don't believe that they're worth anything and they'll tell you that. They'll tell you they're not worth anything and that's because someone has told them that. That's because someone has discovered that they can tell people that and they believe them and they can control them and get them to do out of guilt and shame whatever they want them to do. They don't have value, they don't have worth and that's how they would have it because that's how they can get out of them what they want. Jesus comes to break that cycle. Jesus comes to say, wait just a minute. You are valuable, you are worth, you're made in my image. I am pleased with you. I am glad to be with you and to live with you. I want to share with you my life, the eternity life. I don't want to hold you down. I don't want to control you. I want us to be free together, to live a life together. I don't know how many times I have forgotten to tell my son how much I am proud of him and how much I love him regardless what he does. I don't know how many times I have forgotten to tell Anna and Rachel, my two daughters, how proud I am that they are my daughters, not because of what they have accomplished, not because of how many children they have, not because of their marriage, just because God has gifted Mary and me with their presence and has entrusted us with them. How proud we are that God has given them and entrusted them to us. When is the last time I've ever said Blessings upon you. God is proud of you. God has created you in his image and he is so proud that you are alive and he is with you. He's blessing you. How proud God is. But we don't seem to get a lot of that because maybe we don't believe that about ourselves or maybe it's just safer not to be that way. If I 
feel like that I'm not worth anything, that I don't really have to change. If I don't feel like that I need to be any better, I most definitely don't have to think differently or be differently. I can just keep going in the direction I want to go, and so, so what? Dr. Rogers, Reverend Rogers, you know who I'm talking about, don't you? Mr. Rogers, who was a Presbyterian minister, had a kid's show that ran many, many years. And one of the things that he wanted children to hear and to believe and to trust and to live out was a message, I like you just the way you are. I wonder how many of us have said that to one another. I wonder how many of us have affirmed one another in that faith, in that trust that we like you just like you are. We wouldn't make you any different. You are unique, your fingerprint, your voice print. God has made you a very unique person. You are who you are. And as a result, God is going to teach us how to love you and how to be with you. Sometimes it's not the person outside of us that needs to change, it's us who needs to change. I heard something really weird. This is weird. This is weird. I just want to tell you this. This is weird. I actually heard on a podcast, yes, it was dark and I had my headphones on and it's just me listening. I heard this man say, never heard anything like this in my life. I heard this man say that one day when we are in heaven, all of us, how we are now, will be how we are then. The difference will be then we will know how to treat one another that here, the way we are now, we don't know how to treat one another. But up there, with the Lord in heaven, we will be the same way we are here, yet we will know how to treat one another like human beings, and it will really be like heaven. <laughs> and I thought, this guy's crazier than a Bessie bug. <laughs> Serious. We're going to be the same way up there as we are down here, but we're going to be different up there, and we're going to know how to treat one another. you got to be kidding me, man. We're all going to be different up there. That's how we're going to know how to treat one another. Boy, you don't know the scriptures. And that's one of my greatest fears. I've always wondered why Jesus said this. Would you, not to, would you not rather have one less arm in eternity than both arms in Hades? Would you not rather have one eye in eternity instead of two eyes separate from the Lord? I've never understood why he has said that until I heard this guy say this. You are a child of God, brothers and sisters. I don't know what anyone else has said to you, but God is pleased with you and he loves you. Isaiah 43 is the only text in the chapter in the Bible where God says through a prophet, I love you. Not for any particular reason, but because we belong to him. The book of Luke was written for Gentiles because Gentiles wonder, does God also want us? Yes, he does. The Jew first and the Gentile as well. The wise men who were attracted by the stars, he brought them to him. 
He brings shepherds to him. He brings Gentiles with him. He brings Jews to him. He brings all his creation to him because he loves us and wants us to be in relationship with him. I will never forget going to an animal shelter. And I was sitting in the waiting room. And there was a dog there, a pit bull, who had been used as a fighting dog to be fought and bitten and defeated and beaten by other dogs. It was human beings who did this to this animal. And as she was walking around in the waiting room, I sat there and I tried to be real still because I knew that she had been mistreated. And I couldn't believe it. This dog who had been bitten and beaten and mistreated by human beings came up and put her front paws on my knees and laid her head on her feet and looked at me in the face. And I thought to myself, how can an animal trust another human being who has done such to it? And then all of a sudden, my mind went here. How can someone who has been so mistreated and abused want anything to do with me and you? And yet, he does. Because God is love. And there is no darkness in him. May we pray. Almighty God, you love us and how that can be awful hard to believe and trust because we know so much about ourselves. We know our history. We know what we are capable of doing. Yet you love us anyway. You come to be with us. You tell us that you care about us. You provide for us. Today, may we remember we are a child of the living God. Now, may we go live like it. We pray this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is found on page 539, O Spirit of the Living God. I ask you to turn there, if you will, or to follow the screen and let us sing this hymn together.
You are God's beloved in whom he is well pleased. Now go and live as a child of the divine, knowing that God is with you every step and will see you through. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.